I remember when I was eight years old, I had already been acting for a year. And uh, my father was taking it a little bit more serious than I was. And on Saturday mornings, he would wake us up at 8 o'clock to go up to 86th Street to do the Charleston at a place called the Amas Repertory. And we didn't want to go. We, we wanted to keep our Saturdays for ourselves, but my father would wake us up and uh, force my twin brother and I to get on the train and uh, go up to a place called the Amas Repertory. For seven years after that, uh, I had been struggling trying to make a name in off-Broadway off, off plays. And I was so frustrated with the lack of ability to perform and to be artistic that right before Flashdance came out, I became a break dancer. And I would make money by taking the hat off my head and stretching my arm and walking around the crowd and saying, essentially, did I perform well enough for you to give me a dollar? I love you! We love you! Baby! I, I, thank you. Uh, there's so many anecdotes, there's so many stories that go back to my, my grandmother, Carmen, who talked my mother out of having an abortion. <laughs> Thank you, Grandma Carmen. <laughs> I wish you could see this right now, Grandma Carmen. It was a good decision. It was a good decision. The people that I've been fortunate enough to work with, I guess have always looked past the exterior and the ambiguity that I that my existence represents. When I was in my mother's stomach, it was still illegal in parts of America for people of color and, pe and white people to procreate. And there was a, a bill pa passed called Loving versus Virginia that was passed while I was in my mother's womb that uh, eradicated that old law. So I guess I was illegal in the womb. And then uh, when I was born, uh, America had come to their senses. The multifacial film I made was um, a short film and it was uh, out of desperation to be artistic. Everyone had known me just as a bouncer in New York because I wasn't able to get any work I was getting off off-Broadway work, but there was something too ambiguous about the way I looked that would prevent me from ever getting a star, that would prevent me from ever getting a Hollywood star. And I talk about that subject in the short film Multifacial, so there's something very surreal that my father could be here, who taught me everything about acting, who was a theater director in Brooklyn before I was born, and somehow believed that I had something special, even when performing arts didn't accept me for the actors program, and I've been acting for seven years. Uh, I say that just to, to remind the world that sometimes setbacks and sometimes closed doors could fuel you in a way as opposed to defeat you. There's a great saying, you will face many defeats in life, but you yourself should never be defeated. And I guess I, I used that mantra, even when I first came to Hollywood and I was lucky enough to come across Stacey Bariello, my manager, for so long, who was the first person to believe in me, who said, who actually helped me get to Sundance because I had a film that got accepted into Sundance but I didn't have the money to finish the movie and Stacy's company at the time said if you let us manage you we'll give you the finishing funds so that you can go to Sundance 
If they didn't give me the finishing funds, I never would have been able to go to the dramatic competition at Sundance. I guess I'm talking too much because you're all here. Uh, I, I feel like this is such a monumental day and such a special occasion. And I mean, I was joking last night thinking, okay, I'm going to take that star and I'm going to double down and I'm going to get Hannibal the Conqueror. So take this star and get me Barca. Give me, give me Barca while my father can still come to the premiere. The people that I've worked with has, have been a family to me. I've worked with many studios, but that true definition of family never came to me, never was really realized until I worked with Universal. The very name Universal speaks to the idea of multiculturalism. And the idea that they were willing to make Fast and Furious, the Fast and Furious saga, such a, such a multicultural film, such a multicultural franchise, spoke volumes to me. They have been, these stars are so strange to receive because you're receiving it on behalf of everybody that's been a part of your reality, everybody that's been a part of your work. Every actor, every actress that's been in a scene with me has lent that passion and lent that conviction that would allow for that magic to happen in the scene. So without the Jordana Brewsters, without Lorenz Tate, without Michelle Rodriguez, none of those scenes would have been realized. The magic wouldn't have been able to be performed. Without the team at Universal, that has believed in me more than anybody has believed in me in Hollywood. None of these films would have come to light. It would have sounded crazy to any other studio to, to make a fourth Fast and Furious. And it would have sounded ludicrous to make a fifth Fast and Furious. And now, we're literally a week away from shooting Fast 7. And, and I don't know if it's only because of the public or if it's because the executives at the studio are dying to see what happens next. <laughs> the most important thing about today, aside from the fact that I have my family here, the people that I love, I couldn't have done this without Valentino. I couldn't have done this without Samantha. I couldn't have done this without the Mayan queen. And I couldn't have done this without my little Samilce and Vincent. Who I love, love, love so much. And as my daughter says, dreams do come true. Thank you all so much. I, I could stay here and I, I feel like I'm in a, a, such a comfortable forum. I never thought it would be here on... I never thought it would be here in public on a corner, but I guess in some strange way, 30 years ago, I made my living by dancing on corners like this with crowds smaller than this. <laughs> but the crowds that bled into the street and stopped tra traffic. 30 years ago, I was, my heart was singing because I was able to, in spite of the fact that the casting directors and the industry couldn't find a role for me, my heart was singing because I was able to perform out of love to all of you, to an audience on the street with my boombox and my hat.